Cool, so I'm going to show you a demo. And this is a very short demo, but just so that you saw this once, I would like to show you how, sh how the, the sharing code file as a link works. So here I have two applications. I have a WPF and a UWP, so a Windows 10 application, okay? And those two applications have a very similar structure and they all use uh, MVVM, so the uh, model view view model pattern. So we are going to start by adding a view model to that and then we'll share it, okay? So usually what I do is that I like to select one project as being the project where all my physical file will be, will be added. Okay, like this, it's easier to remember. So let's take in that case, Windows 10 one. I'm going to add a new folder. Let's call that view model. And then I'm going to add a file that I already prepared. It's in my repo. And so if I go to here, there is a main view model here. I'm just going to add it, okay? And so what this view model does, it's basically irrelevant here, but it's going to connect to an Azure function. It's going to, um, you know, get the value. So it's going to pass my name and get a value back. And then we'll show that in the, um, in the UI. So now that's cool, but I would like to use the same feature in WPF as well. So what I can do is say, okay, let's go and add another folder here. Also call it view model. All right. And then I'm going to take this main view model file. So I'm going to add an existing item. I'm going to go here to my UWP project, take this view model. And then here, as you can see, I'm adding as a link. Okay. I'm not adding as a copy, but as a link, which means that first of all, we see in the UI that we have this small arrow. Okay. It means it's a shortcut. And if I go and browse to this folder in, in Windows Explorer, we see that it's empty. So the physical file has been added once to the UWP project, and it has been added as a link to the other one, which means that if I'm into my main view model now, I can use it in the context of UWP, or I can use it in the context of WPF, and I can switch the context using this combo box, which is quite useful because that allows you to see if you have an error, is the error in WPF or is it in Windows 10 or is it in both, okay? So once we have that, it's pretty cool. So now we can build the solution. The squigglies here are just because the uh, NuGet packages are not refreshed, you know, the uh, routine. And once it's built, that will disappear in a second as soon as it's done building. Uh, once it's done building, we can run both projects. Okay, so I can run here the uh, UWP version of this application. And I can also go, while it's starting, I'm just going to go and set the WPF1 as startup project and also start running it. So this is a UWP version. This is a WPF version. Both of them work exactly the same. So, and now I can execute and both of them work the same. And so if I want to do a change to this application, I can go here and modify something and then automatically the change will appear in both, okay? Now shared file is a strategy that we don't use as much anymore because now we have portable class library and of course now we have also .NET standard, okay? That I encourage you to use, but it, it can still be useful, for example, if you want to share some files in the Xamarin application, like some icons, for example, between the Android, iOS, and Windows application, then you can use this strategy. It works pretty well, and then you have the files only once in your source control to maintain. 